warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello everyone, my name is Rizka Radio Putri Permana And I'm from T6 Education to be State Islamic University Sharif Hidayatullah, Jakarta In this video, I'm going to tell you about modern physics So, I bet some people are wondering what modern physics is Our physics is divided into two parts, like traditional and modern So the answer is no It is true if physics are divided into two parts, but it's not modern and traditional. It's classical physics and modern physics. So, are you guys wondering what modern physics is? Modern physics is part of a physical science that studies matter and energy on the atomic scale and subatomic particles or waves. Modern physics was developed in the early 20th century, where formulations in classical physics were no longer able to explain the phenomena occurring in extremely small matter, and learners just as in classical physics. But the materials discussed in modern physics are atomic or subatomic scales and particles moving at high speeds. So everyone, there is a brief explanation about modern physics. Well, modern physics has a lot of things to discuss, like special theory of relativity, atomic physics, nucleonics, and also radioactivity. And since I don't have much time to discuss all about them in one video, I will choose one that people are talking about. So this is the special theory of relativity. The special theory of relativity is a theory of physics that published in 1905 by Albert Einstein. This theory has replaced Newton's opinion about space and time and inserted electromagnetism as written by Maxwell equation. There are some things discussed in this material. These are relativity of simultaneity, time dilation, length contraction, maximum speed is finite, mass energy equivalence, and the last, relativistic mass. Relativity of simultaneity In physics, the relativity of simultaneity is the concept that distance simultaneity whether two spatially separate events occur at the same time. It's not absolute, but depends on the observer's reference. Time dilation Time dilation is a consequence of the special theory of relativity in which two observers move relative to one another well, observe that the clock of the other is ticking slower than the clock. This event is not the result of an error of hours or other technical factors, but is the fundamental nature of the bending of space-time described in the theory of relativity. We can use this formula for the time dilation. Length contraction. Length contraction is the phenomenon that a moving object's length is measured to be shorter than its proper length, which is the length as measured in the object's own rest frame. Length contraction is only in the direction in which the body is traveling. For standard objects, this effect is negligible at everyday speeds and can be ignored for all regular purpose only becoming significant as the object approaches the speed of life relative to the observer. Maximum speed is finite. Physical object message or field line can travel faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. The effect of gravity can only travel through space at the speed of light, not faster or instantaneously. The speed of light in vacuum commonly denotes c, is a universal physical constant important in many areas of physics. Its exact value is defined as 299792458 meters per second. Mass energy equivalence In physics, mass energy equivalence is the principle that anything having mass has an equivalent amount of energy and vice versa with these fundamental quantities directly relating to one another by Albert Einstein's famous formula. This formula states that the equivalent energy can be calculated as the mass multiplied by the speed of light. 
relativistic mass. The relativistic mass is the sum total quantity of energy in a body or system. Thus, the mass in the formula is the relativistic mass. For a particle of finite rest mass moving at speed relative to the observer one finds, the relativistic mass is the mass of the system as it would be measured on a scale, but in some cases, this fact remains true only because the system on average must be at rest to be weak. The special theory of relativity also based on two postulates which are contradictory in classical mechanics, and these postulates published by Einstein. First, the laws of physics are the same for all observers in any inertial frame or reference relative to one another or principle of relativity. Two, the speed of light on a vacuum is the same for all observers regardless of their relative motion or of the motion of the light source. Okay everyone, I think it's enough for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you soon!